All right, well, today we're going to take a look at the next key topic that comes up in chapter two of your book, which does, as it says here, deal with deductive reasoning. You might remember that last week we talked about inductive reasoning. That was where you looked at specific examples and you tried to recognize patterns and figure out what was going to come next. You guys were doing that last week, and the whole idea is you started with specific examples, you worked your way toward general conclusions. Deductive reasoning is kind of the exact opposite of that. What you do with deductive reasoning is you start with general rules that you know are true. There are things like the postulates that we talked about in chapter one, things that are so obvious that we just assume they're true without asking questions, or things we've already proved are true. We start with those general rules, and we use those to prove specific conclusions. We use those things to explain why other things are true. Like I said, it kind of goes the opposite direction from inductive reasoning. In inductive reasoning, you start with specifics and you work your way toward general. With deductive reasoning, it's the other way around where you start with the general principle and you conclude that the specific cases have to be true as well. If you do start with true statements, when you use deductive reasoning, the conclusion you, you reach will always end up being true. Now, today we're gonna to learn a couple of specific rules that you can use for deductive reasoning. What's going to happen when you get to problems in your book, which will be tomorrow, is they're going to give you some examples and you're supposed to figure out which of these is going on, or they'll ask you to reach a conclusion using one of these reasons. The first of these is what's called the law of detachment. And it looks way more complicated than it is. It says if the hypothesis of a true conditional is true, then the conclusion must also be true. So if A implies B is true and you also know A, then you can conclude B. Easiest way to think about if law of detachment is that if you know the if part, the then part's gotta happen as well. You know the if part, therefore the then part. So I'm gonna give you at least one example, maybe a couple of them here. This one says, if you're in Algebra 1 this year, then you should be in Geometry the following year. And you guys were all in Algebra 1 last year. So if you think through that for a minute, you should be able to conclude that you should be in Geometry this year. Again, I know the if part happened, so therefore, the then part's got to happen too. If the first part, then the second. We know the first part, so we conclude the second. Here's another one. You have to stop for gas when you drive a long distance. Last summer, I ended up driving up to Minneapolis, which was like the longest trip I took by car during the pandemic. And if you think about that, you should be able to conclude that I had to stop for gas. That's law of detachment. I know that I traveled a long distance, therefore I had to stop for gas. And that's just law of detachment. You know the if part, therefore the then part. The other rule is what your book calls the law of syllogism. Your book is one of the few places where you'll see that particular term, but because they use that, that's why I have it here. In a lot of other places, they'll call the same rule the transitive law. And the dead giveaway, if you were like looking at examples in the book, is there's always a bunch of if-then statements. If it's big and long, it's probably gonna be syllogism. So it says, if A implies B and B implies C, then A implies C. If one thing, then another, and if the second thing, then a third, then basically you can kind of cut out the middle and say the first thing implies 
the third. So here's an example. It says, if you get an A in all your tests, then you'll get an A in the class. If you get an A in the class, then your parents will be happy. So I have one if-then sentence that leads into another, and then I have the second if-then sentence, and what I can do is cut from the beginning to the end and say, if you get an A on all your tests, then your parents will be happy. The middle part has to overlap for syllogism or transitive, and you basically get rid of that middle part and do the if part of the first one, the then part of the second, and they make one if-then sentence from it. Here's one that's probably hard to read on your screen, but it's the same kind of thing. It says here, if it snows, then I will wear gloves. If I wear gloves, then my fingers will be warm. So the conclusion is, if it snows, then my fingers will be warm. Again, you just cut the middle and do if part of the first one, then part of the second. That's the law of syllogism or the transitive law. Now you can probably see from those examples, it is a little bit harder to do deductive reasoning because you're not just predicting what comes next. But the nice thing about deductive reasoning is that when you use that, the conclusion you reach always has to be true. So again, deductive reasoning, you start with general rules and you conclude specific examples. The law of detachment means if the if part's true, the then part has to be true as well. And the law of syllogism or transitive, you can cut out the middle and lead from the if part of the first statement to the then part of the last one as one conclusion. So that's the first part of deductive reasoning. We'll do some problems with those tomorrow, but that's where we are right now.